The Arkansas Razorbacks defeat LSU and Bud Walton Arena in a thrilling college basketball game, which really only means one thing. Arkansas owns LSU. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I'm your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz. Dot com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Thursday. And if you're a Razorback basketball fan, you have to be having a great Thursday. And honestly, we'll talk a lot about uh, the game itself and what, what was just incredible. I mean, 77 to 76, Arkansas wins by one point against LSU. Just a great performance by a few individual players on both times. I mean, you got Stanley Amude going for 23 points. Jalen getting 19 and 10. You had uh, DC Tony, 18 points. Dude doesn't even have offense run for him. But also Tari Eason, 24 points for him, 19 points for Darius Days for LSU. Just a great game, a great game overall. And I know that uh, we'll actually talk about some individuals in the game uh, probably in the next segment. But as you saw in the intro and probably heard in the intro at least, I think that there is a much bigger picture here that we need to discuss. And one that if you are watching this or listening to this and you are an LSU fan, you're probably not going to like it. You're probably going to talk trash in the comments section or tweet mean things at me. Probably make fun of my physical appearance and all that stuff. Fine, whatever. Do what you got to do. But uh, I'm just, it, it's its so funny. It is so funny how here over the past roughly year, I mean, yeah, we'll just take the calendar year, the past year. Arkansas has completely and totally owned LSU in the major sports. And I can't really explain how happy that makes me. And it has nothing really to do with necessarily, um, you know, just specifically LSU and hating on them or anything like that. Like maybe that's for part of you to believe. But I'm actually going to take it in a different approach of why I'm so happy that Arkansas is having so much success against LSU, especially over the past year. And it's because like LSU is a program overall where they should really never be bad in any sport. Like they have so much going for them and so many different sports and they have a really good athletic director that seems to be putting together a really good coaching culture there at LSU. Uh, you know, hiring Brian Kelly up in football, uh, whether or not it works out, is still a pretty rock star hire, all things considered. Uh, and and baseball, of course, his name just uh, has escaped me. I think is it is it is it Jay? I don't want to say is it Jay Jacobs. I don't know if that's right. But anyways, the baseball coach from Arizona, just the name escaped me. Um, well, big time hire for them. I mean, a guy's been successful pretty much everywhere he's ever been, and especially at Arizona. So big time hire for them. Like they got Kim Mulkey, like in women's basketball. She was at Baylor forever having big time success, but she, you know, came to LSU. And Will Wade, dude, is just the worst, like just a whiny little child. Um, but he still has done a good job recruiting. And uh <laughs> couldn't even get through that. He's he's not been bad. Like he's got good players. They have underachieved a little bit this year, but they're set up for success further down the road. Like they're recruiting and all that stuff. They're doing a good job. So they're respectable, but I say all that to say this LSU is a program that is always going to be pretty solid or elite in the major sports more often than not. They've won championships. They've played in final fours. They've won college world series. They just, they've done it all. And when you're a place like Arkansas and you play LSU in all the major sports every single year, like they're one, like they're one of the teams where you play them twice every year in college basketball. You're going to play them every year in baseball. You're going to play them every year in football and all that. There's a lot of connections. There's a lot of rivalry. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of things going on. But by and large, LSU usually beats you. They've usually beat you in baseball. Uh, they've usually beat you in football. And they've, I wouldn't say usually beat you in basketball. It's been pretty even, but still had success nonetheless. But not this year. 
not this time around. And some of you who are maybe LSU fans are saying, well, it's because we're down. We had Coach Ed Orgeron and, you know, last year basketball, the COVID year, and, you know, baseball was our guy's final year. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. You took the L's. You lost to Arkansas in every major sport. Dating back to last year, you lost in basketball at home to Arkansas. All right? Now, you won in the SEC tournament, and you'll probably point to that because, oh, ho, ho, ho. Fine. Arkansas didn't have Jalen Williams in that game because of COVID protocols. If Arkansas had Jalen Williams, they would have won that game. It's just a fact. And then in football, Arkansas went down to Baton Rouge and beat you in overtime. In fact, Arkansas had probably their worst offensive performance of the season against the LSU Tigers. Did not do very many things well, but Arkansas still went down to the Baton Rouge and won. And they didn't just do that in football. They also did it in basketball, too, this year. You got swept by the Razorbacks. Arkansas went to Baton Rouge earlier in the season when they were about as down and out as possible. They didn't even have their head coach. Musselman was out because of the shoulder surgery. LSU had like a nine-point lead with like less than 10 minutes to go in the game, and they blew it in Arkansas won. And then in this game, and Bud Walton, LSU had their chances, but they still lost. It's amazing. Like, it's amazing how that's happened. And if you're a Razorback fan, you have to be just so ecstatic for what this has really been and how this has felt to be able to own LSU like this. Now, is Arkansas going to continue their ownership of the Tigers for the foreseeable future? Probably not. I mean, it's you're not going to have winning streaks against all of uh, in every major sport against one particular school for a very long time. In fact, I probably feel like uh, next year, if we had the same conversation, you may have lost LSU a couple of times. But if you look at the positions of where these programs are at, like in basketball, Arkansas is for sure in better shape and for sure better than LSU, 100%. Baseball, transition, we'll see how it goes with uh, their new skipper down there at LSU. They'll be really good, but as of right now, this exact moment, Arkansas is a much better baseball program at this moment, not historically, this moment. Make sure you get that right. And then in football, like, yeah, Brian Kelly and LSU may do pretty great, but so is Arkansas. Arkansas is going to be right there in the mix. In fact, you can go ahead and mark it on your calendars right now or mark it down, write it down, take a picture, screen record it, send it to uh, Old Takes Exposed or Cold Takes Exposed, whoever it is. Like, just send it to them. Here's the thing. I go, I'm going to go out and say that Arkansas in football over the next 10 years, now we'll make it five years so that way, you know, it makes it a little more easier to track. Next five years, Arkansas will have a winning record against the LSU Tigers in football. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And because of that confidence, because of that fact, in that way and in that shape and in that form, for now and for the future, Arkansas is a better program. They're a better athletic program as of right now. And I believe that Arkansas is going to continue to dominate in basketball. I think they're going to continue to win in baseball. And I think that more often than not, they're going to win in football. And then, and then, the LSU Tigers and the fan base will scream and shout and yell and talk about how much they hate Arkansas and they don't care about Arkansas and it's nothing. Well, yeah, okay. You may not care as much when you were having success when Arkansas was down and out. But when Arkansas starts beating you and beating you consistently and beating you when you have good teams, you're going to start to come around on the whole idea that, you know, maybe Arkansas is not that – inferior program maybe they're more of our equal or maybe they're even our superior enjoyed Razorback fans while it lasts against LSU because the Wikipedia page has already shown who is the athletic director of LSU and I believe it's uh Arkansas yeah I don't know I think that was a stretch whoever put that in there but still Stop. It's kind of funny, right? It's kind of funny. I think it's funny, but either way. Uh, March Madness, folks. It's still going on. I mean, we're in March, and Madness is technically going on right now. But the madness, as we all know, is just a couple weeks away. And you need to start thinking about where you're going to be running your brackets this year. Don't go for the usual, though. Don't go for ESPN. Don't go for CBS. Don't go for those 
random ones that aren't fun and really don't provide anything, go with Run Your Pool. And it's along with standard brackets that you can check out. It's at runyourpool.com that you can do. You have different games you can choose from, both really fun in their own way between Survivor and Pick X. They also have edits and options for scoring. And you can have a lot more intel for your picks as well. So if you're not very comfortable, not very confident in who you want to pick or how you want to pick, Run Your Pool will help you out with that. Clearly, we believe in it here on this podcast because that's where we're running all of our pools for the bracket. So if we're running it, you know it's good. If you want to play against us for a shot at a cash prize, join us now at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter Pure Madness, all right? Pure Madness at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. All the rules and details will be available there, so be sure to check it out. Again, runyourpool.com slash locked on for a chance to win a cash prize. We look forward to seeing and beating you there at runyourpool.com. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so uh, continuing on with the podcast, and uh, I thought that this was really timely and really funny because we were talking about Arkansas owning LSU, but Arkansas, of course, having a phenomenal player in Jalen Williams and ha what has become so much a part of his uh, popularity is his ability to take charges. 47 charges he has taken this year. 47 charges. Now, let's be honest, fans. Let's be honest. Of those 47 charges, I'd be willing to give, what, 15 of them, maybe suspect calls, maybe should have been blocks, maybe should have gone the other way. But still, even 15 of those charges, assuming that we're, because I think that's being generous with that, you're still talking about over 30 charges taken, legitimate charges taken by Jalen Williams. And it's awesome to see him be able to do that and make that a part of his game. Now, I also believe that there is a problem in college basketball when it comes to the block charge call. I don't think it's right the way it is. I think it needs to be changed. I think it needs to be fixed. I think it needs to be studied upon and really trained and have a better idea of it in the offseason, 100%. But as of right now, Jalen Williams is taking advantage of the calls. He's taking advantage of the way the game is called. So you can't really hate on him for that. But what cracks me up, and if you're watching here on YouTube, you'll see the sign right over here. Uh, and how I say Jalen Williams charges taken 47 and triggered fan base is 13. Of course, for 13 SEC teams. You get it? Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I just came up with a different number there, too. But still, uh, either way, it's a it's a pretty, pretty funny thing to see just exactly how these fan bases are so upset with Jalen Williams. Like, I even saw this, and, and I know, like, Jack Pilgrim of Kentucky Sports Radio. Like, I, I know him, and he's he's like me. Like, some people need to not take it so seriously. Like, he's talking trash to Arkansas, just like I talk trash to Kentucky. You know, so don't take it too personally. I don't, but I did kind of go at him a little bit uh, because he tweeted out, he's like, these dorks have a – charge counter to celebrate this nonsense stop rewarding this everything about this is embarrassing and so i see that and he's not the only one mind you and i'm sorry i'm calling him out but like him tennessee fans for some reason are still pissed off and they were like going through it all uh yes last night too and i'm like what, what are y'all doing like we got another game against you saturday worry about that um but either way like they're a mad kentucky fans are mad auburn fans are mad like they're so mad at Jalen williams for the charge he's taking. I'm like, oh, that should be a flop counter instead of a charge counter. Good one. Like, it, it's so dumb. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at all this and I get it that it's probably because it's my guy. Like, if it, if he was, if Jalen Williams was on another team and he was doing these things and are against Arkansas, we would probably hate him too. We would probably talk trash about him too. Like, it's part of it. It's part of it. And you see that guy, it's annoying and all those things too. But, to like go after Arkansas and the way that they have the charge counter and the way that they have uh, the promotion of it all is so weird. Because to me, if you have an incredible feat and an incredible stat that you 
are being able to have so much success in, regardless of if it's meaningful or not, it's still something that schools and teams and all of that promote and talk about. You know, like imagine if there was a, a player that had gone 15 straight games without committing a foul or something like that. You don't think that that would be a counter or something? Or if they had a streak of made free throws, they'd be counting those off. It's it's how it is. But because of this rule and because of how it's so controversial to people, they say, okay, well, there's it's so terrible that they're actually keeping a counter of this. It's an, it's it's been embarrassing because it's it's lame, it's weak, it's not college basketball or anything. Hey, it's called doing whatever it takes to win. I don't care if it's right or wrong. I just care about the fact that it's the way the game is called. It's not against the rules. And people think that it takes away from the game. It doesn't at all. It's part of the game. It needs to be adjusted for sure, but it's still part of the game. It's still something, it's a strategy. And it's an incredible strategy because if I've mentioned before, with Jalen Williams taking these charges, not only does it result in a turnover, not only does it result in a foul being called on a player that's usually really good and a guard who doesn't get a lot of fouls called on them, especially offensive fouls, like it does that, but it's also the threat of it. It's also, you know, making them think twice before they start going inside again because they know Jalen Williams is going to be there. Like it's all a mind game and it's an incredible mind game that Jalen Williams has mastered. So like we get all that. And I understand that. I think you understand that too. But the the vitriol that comes from it all is is just bad and it's weird. And I don't understand, like if you don't hate on Jalen Williams, don't hate on Arkansas, hate on the system. You know, and people will like, and this is another thing that piss, pisses me off. I'm sorry, I'm on a rant here. Uh, but this is another thing that like people will bring up. They'll be like, oh, well, you know, you have such a problem with uh, Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin faking injuries. It's, you know, this, it's just the same. I'm like, it is not the same at all. It is not the same at all. Because at least in, in basketball with charges, that's still a basketball play. Now, it may not be called the right way or needs to be fixed on how it's called, but it's still a basketball play. Faking injuries is not football. Like That's not a football thing. Like, that's you utilizing the, and putting, like, boxing in pretty much the NCAA and the officials of ones that they're so concerned about player safety and making that such a priority, but you take advantage of that system. You take advantage of them having that sort of mentality and sympathy and all that where they're like, okay, we want to make sure these kids are safe. But at the same time, though, if we like you're you're manipulating is what you're doing and you're manipulating uh, something that can't be monitored, like how are you going to know if someone's faking an injury or not? You can't <laughs> that like can't be fixed. So that's not a football play. That's not football. Taking charges in basketball is basketball. It's a basketball play. Again, it may not be called correctly. It may need a fixing and adjusting, but it's basketball and it's a basketball play. So I can't believe that I can that everyone, these uh, fan bases are so riled up and pissed off by this. But as I tweeted out, it really just shows me how good Arkansas is at basketball. It really shows me that the Razorbacks are starting to finally arrive as one of those programs where it's not just a good year, they're a good program. And it drives these people insane. And the reason being is because they can't talk trash. They can't start saying, well, we beat you because you haven't beat Arkansas. You didn't beat Arkansas, Auburn. You didn't beat Arkansas, Kentucky. You didn't beat Arkansas, Tennessee. You didn't beat them. You didn't beat them, LSU. You didn't beat them. So when you can't talk trash with getting the win, what do you do? What do you say? How do you talk trash? Uh, Yeah, well, that Jalen Williams guy, he's a big flopper. Yeah, charge charges all over the place. Huh, it's weak. It's lame. Great, sweet, yeah. Yeah, put that in the trash, uh, trash Talk Hall of Fame. That's great. That's a good one. But that's all they got. That's all they can say is just, well, we didn't we didn't win, but you have a guy that that's 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 lame. All right. Okay. You uh go be not lame and take the losses. Arkansas will continue to be lame and take the wins.
and we'll see what people care about the most. Yeah, it's kind of like the, no, I'm not going to say that. This is a, this is a family podcast. I'm not going to say, it, but either way, it's so dumb. And I just, but I love it. I love the fact that they're so triggered by all this stuff and there's nothing they can do. Hey, football may be over this season, but basketball is in full steam and both college and pro hoops from all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where to find the next fired head coach is going to land. BetOnline.net remains the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot also for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC, right down to your Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today, though, and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions at BetOnline.net, where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so uh, final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I know we'll have uh, tomorrow's podcast, but I I may have a very special guest on tomorrow. I'm trying to get it confirmed, so I don't want to uh, to tease it just yet unless I get it confirmed, but it'll be really cool, I think, at least. Um, so uh, the reason I bring that up is because if I do have that guest on tomorrow, we won't really have a chance to talk much about Tennessee and uh, that game too. But uh, just real quick to kind of get, do a little uh, – little recap of, uh, or at least a little idea of what Arkansas can expect out of them. Uh, there's still something to play for. Like Auburn almost lost last night. They went to overtime against Mississippi state and folks, if Arkansas, if, if Auburn would have lost that game to Mississippi state, the sec regular season title would have come down to Arkansas and Tennessee on Saturday. Like, that's how insane that like you, you're overtime, overtime, so close. Uh, but they didn't get it. But either way, you're still playing for something to where Auburn, I guess they could still lose because they still have a game left, but I sincerely doubt it because they have a home game against South Carolina, which I don't know. South Carolina, they've been a lot better this year. I think they're nine and eight in conference play. Like they've actually been a lot better. So I guess there's a chance, but it's not likely, especially in the final game there at home. But unless they lose. Uh, you're not going to win the regular season. But it's going to come down to Arkansas, Kentucky, and Tennessee to see who finishes with the two seed, which to me, I, I get that it'd be for bragging right check. You want to beat Tennessee. I want to beat Tennessee. It'd be nice to sweep Tennessee because then you'd have another team to add to your resume of sweeping them. But if you don't, I'm not, but the thing is, I'm not expecting to. Like going on the road to win at Tennessee in their senior night game, like that's that's tough. That's a tough thing to do. And it'd be tough for anybody to do. So, uh, I'm not expecting it. Plus, the t as we know, the top four seeds in the SEC are all undefeated at home, except for Arkansas with that one loss. So it's just not very possible for that to happen. As great as it would be, though, to happen. But even if it doesn't happen, like what's the difference between the two seed and the three seed? You know? Or what's the difference between the four seed and the three seed? In the SEC tournament, really nothing. Now, I guess depending on how the committee's looking at it, they may raise Arkansas up and down in the seating in the NCAA tournament. Like, I guess, like, I, I didn't get the chance to check Lenardi, but I'm assuming he's probably still got Arkansas as a four seed in the tournament, maybe a higher four seed now. Um, I think if you beat Tennessee, you become a three seed on the road, especially. If you beat Tennessee, you become a three seed. Uh, but if you don't, you'll still be a four seed. And say if you lose to Tennessee and then lose in the first round of the SEC tournament, I still don't see Arkansas dropping below a four seed. But if you win, I think three seed. I, but again, three and four seed, really, what's the difference? It's more about the matchups that you have. But still, uh, we know Arkansas is playing for that, and that's on the line uh, when it comes to the game against Tennessee. And again, I'm not expecting Arkansas to win. I'm hopeful. Um, you know, it'd be great. We'll celebrate it. We'll pop bottles. We'll have fun. We'll go streaking, whatever it takes. Uh, but also, another thing, too, about Arkansas, they won 13 SEC games for the second year in a row. First time they've won 13 conference games in back-to-back -back years since 90 and 91. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Yeah, seriously. And here's the other thing. They're the only SEC team to do it last year and this year. Auburn and Kentucky were really bad last year. Tennessee was pretty good last year, but... Arkansas is the only one to do it. 
In fact, Arkansas should have 14 wins if it wasn't for A&M having COVID problems last year in the basketball program. They only got to play them once when they should have played them twice, but still. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty big time. And next year could be even more fun. But we still got this year, so you got to play through all that. So either way, good luck, Arkansas, against Tennessee. It's not going to be an easy game, that's for sure. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see.